Hi Gary, how are you? I'm well, how are you doing Nikki? Perfect, the weather is nice, so ultimately the mood is also great. Today we are talking about sales and can you tell me and my listeners, a small audience of curious people, how did you end up in sales and in particularly leasing sales? That was a great question, Nikki. So what got me into leasing and sales When I got into the leasing business, I explored many different positions. I started as a leasing consultant. I grew to marketing. I tried out property management, then being an assistant manager um, with property operations. I I figured out um, the managing side of me is not my forte with marketing. I figured out the marketing side of me is not my forte, but however, with customer service, Mm -hmm. the leasing side of the business, I enjoy sales. I enjoy helping people get what they are looking for, aligning them and redirecting them to the value of what I have to offer that will suit their needs. That's awesome. You said you like leasing because you work directly with the customers and helping them find their homes. That's basically very interesting. Uh, matching problem that you're trying to solve. Can you tell my listeners how do we know each other and how we ended up on this um, podcast episode right now? Yes. No, I love that question, Nikki. I discovered you on Medium platform when I was trying to explore freelancing Mm -hmm. and I wasn't so good at it. I just stumbled upon you and been in contact with you and thank you for helping me with my website mm-hmm. <laughs> when exploring the freelancing world it's another route that I wanted to try out I discovered I wasn't good at it and I felt great talent like you mm-hmm. where I could delegate my media um work over to the hands of someone that is passionate mm-hmm. and make my vision a reality. So thank you, Nikki. My website is beautiful. Credit belongs to you. <laughs> thank and if, you. <laughs> if anybody is looking for a website creator, go to Nikki and check out my website, garywilliams-sales.com to see what Nikki has created for me. And I love showing it off. <laughs> thank you thank Nikki. you no problem thank you i will leave the link in the description for you to check the, his website but yes it was kind of very um internet friends kind of situation where we just started with comments on one article and then follow up on instagram and then ended up working together and here we are now filming this uh, podcast episode i'm european so i live here and leasing is not a word that uh, it's common to me if i don't know anything about sales how would you explain leasing to the rest of the world that's a great question leasing is wearing a lot of different hats within the apartment business Mm -hmm. with leasing i mean we are responsible for not only leasing the apartments but marketing promoting on social media Mm -hmm. like linkedin facebook instagram craigslist rent cafe Mm -hmm. various sources Mm -hmm. we're also responsible for free walking every apartment Mm -hmm. to make sure it's been turned properly and that the resident is that the future resident is moving into a good home not something that's been quickly turned and looks sloppy last second so presentation is crucial in the leasing role as well Mm -hmm. also shopping comps meaning figuring out what are other communities doing that we might not be doing understanding what strengths they have and what strengths we have what weaknesses they have and what weaknesses we have Mm -hmm. Uh, would you say then that the apartment complex is built and then you as an external provider are responsible to bringing people and families into the property is that how it happens yeah um prospecting uh, mm-hmm. meaning making those phone calls to bring people in mm-hmm. that is part 
like when somebody clicks on a link and I get notified, I reach out to that person and ask, I noticed that you checked out our community and I mm -hmm. wanted to invite you for a tour. Oh, okay. I'm just showing that I'm aware that they are in the market for a home or shopping around. I'm just giving them an opportunity to schedule an appointment to come with me so that I can show them what I have to offer and what makes us that what makes us a value to them, what would benefit them, um, whether if they're looking for a location, they're looking for a specific size or a community, it's good to invite them in so that they can get a feel of what they will be signing up for. Mm -hmm. So would you say that leasing is basically renting, but in a much longer term? Yeah, like versus something similar to a hotel business. Yes, mm -hmm. it's signing six month nine month 12 month leases not three day one week visits mm -hmm. so that it's longer term um renters versus shorter term correct okay okay that's interesting what does a typical day look like for you as a leasing consultant and a typical day uh for me it consists of many different hats such as pre-walking the apartments before my appointments come in, mm -hmm. prospecting, following up to bring traffic in, presenting specials and uh, apartments that I have available on various social media platforms. I also have to um, do renewals to see, to get an idea of who's exiting and versus who's staying so that I know what future months I can expect leading into what's more time sensitive mm -hmm. versus where I can shift my focus to other areas such as resident events, mm -hmm. giving back to the community and having residents get to know each other, you mm -hmm. know? And is it your responsibility also, for example, if those families... Uh, are exiting the the community to check if anything needs also repair or some kind of maintenance is it also in your job description to do that e yes yes and yes and and no in a way and let me elaborate on that mm -hmm. it's a good question because we throughout the lease term we mm -hmm. have a couple of inspections fire mm -hmm. inspections and pre preventive maintenance inspections mm -hmm. just so that we know well one to make sure there's no fire hazards and two just to make sure that our apartment is in the hands of someone that is taking care of it mm -hmm. towards the end of the lease we do notify them that we're going to do a renewal walk mm -hmm. this in a way is tough love to get them to clean up their apartments yeah, yeah. because it's a renewal walk so that we can offer them a lease renewal versus notifying them that we it's might over. need more other options yes yeah, yeah yeah that's a very gentle and nice approach in my opinion my landlady is doing something similar because she's like uh, she trusts me that I'm taking care of her uh, small apartment, studio apartment, and she's like, okay, sometimes after you pay your rent, I will come and check on your uh, situation in the apartment, but I will not tell you when. And I'm like, oh, perfect. So I know that when the rent is due, I have to do a one big cleanup and then we'll be, I will be ready, you know, if she comes in and be like, okay, let me see, is it clean enough? <laughs> So I think that's really a nice and gentle approach to uh, communicate to your community that some things have to be maintained and taken care of on time. That's that's good. Um, another question I have on my list here is that do you remember any pivotal moment in your career that shaped your approach to sales, like something that made you change your mind? Yeah, it very good question and it was when i um as i was exploring options and figuring out who what i'm good at and ultimately my why so mm -hmm. when i got into the business i started off as leasing and i've done that for a few years mm -hmm. early on and throughout leasing i knew i wanted to 
grow within the company. I went in thinking marketing would be perfect for me. And the reason why I thought that is because Every time I saw the marketing specialist at the time, it was always like a camera uh-huh. and doing like the community highlights mm-hmm. of features and the events that's going on. I went into that department thinking I'd be that guy with the camera mm-hmm. and it's having, just fun. Fo- having fun and focused on the positive aspects of the community, which is true, by the way. Mm-hmm. What I didn't realize when I achieved that goal and I got into marketing, it was overwhelming. My flaw in that position was my adaptability Mm -hmm. to all the material material being thrown at me at once. Mm -hmm. It was overwhelming. I did the job, Mm -hmm. but it was frustrating when I wasn't hitting my mark Mm -hmm. of the expectation. So I mean, it's so deep. It's not, it's between all the reviews that I had to respond to in that field. Also in that field, I had to overlook the platforms, like make sure the specials are still active Mm -hmm. and accurate. Make sure nothing is misworded on uh, like features, like uh, an apartment complex might be promoting a fitness center when they don't have fitness center and that's on marketing because we have to make sure exactly that it's accurate yeah. so I after uh, spending about a year in marketing mm-hmm. I decided to step down it it was just not for me mm-hmm. I went back to leasing and then I grew into the assistant manager of the business mm-hmm. in that role I was good I was very thorough I did a great job as an assistant manager um what I disliked about that role and mm-hmm. not inspiring me to transition into property manager, I felt like in a way I was kind of a dad because <laughs> all the problems, <laughs> they go to the property manager. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I didn't want to expand into solely property operations. Mm-hmm. So now that I've explored customer service and sales, customer service and marketing and customer service with property management, what I liked the most was customer service and sales. Mm -hmm. This position they created being the national lease and sales consultant is focused on sales. The purpose Mm -hmm. of my position is, I love it. It's amazing. I I am sent over to communities that are struggling the hardest in occupancy levels. Mm -hmm. And my job is to focus on customer service and sales to to increase the occupancy level. Um, And then I move on to the next assignment. So Mm -hmm. I'm usually at a property for two to three weeks. Then I get a week off. Mm -hmm. And my position... It's um, it's interesting because being national, there there's a lot of challenges that come with it. Mm-hmm. It's also it's um, adapting to state and local laws mm-hmm. and adapting to the regional preferences of how they want things handled. So you would say that uh, having a taste of sales type related to marketing and sales made you realize that this type of sales is not for you and you don't want to be the dad of the community but rather be traveling more and being challenged would you say that um united states has like different states or maybe as like a different country and they have like different cultural background habits attitude uh how do you call stereotypes Absolutely. Yeah, it's um very interesting um traveling the United States and seeing the different personality, the different laws, the different mm-hmm. like like as an example. Yeah. Michigan, where I'm currently living, is a seven day state in the business. Oh, um which means meaning that- like yeah, which means like if resident is late on rent, we mm-hmm. notify them they have seven days uh-huh. to pay. Okay. 
And then going over to like Colorado, mm -hmm. it's a 30 day state, which it leans, the laws lean towards the resident while Michigan, the laws lean a little more towards the landlord. Oh. We have more control. I see. I and see. It, it, it's really interesting how what I can do in some states versus what I can't do in other states, if that makes sense. And yeah. also, yeah, um, I've noticed like as I go a little more south, there's more Hispanic and mm -hmm. a little more towards the north of America, specifically in the Iowa mm -hmm. region. I was actually shocked. There's a lot of French. <laughs> it's real interesting. Um, but yeah, every assignment I go to, it's interesting seeing the different personalities, the different cultures, and the different laws that I have to work with. Mm -hmm. How do you keep track of these laws? Do you have like some kind of um, maybe spreadsheet or rule book to look up to things and be like oh my god I don't remember this state right now what was the rule or law about this specific thing how do you find this information do you have some um, I don't know knowledge base no very good question and I actually have a mini bible with every assignment <laughs> so what I mean by that is yeah. when I enter into an assignment Mm -hmm. Because I'm not 100% certain mm -hmm. of what I can do. And like, also some states to add on top of that, mm -hmm. some states are just non-refundable states, while some require that you have to pay them back. Mm -hmm. How I overcome all of that is when I enter an assignment, I take their criteria for that specific property and usually my first day as I'm making those calls, I'm just verbating. Mm. Yep, the application fee is going to be non-refundable. Mm -hmm. it, it's just verbate the policy of that specific property mm -hmm. and you'll be safe. Yeah, because I think being so upfront, upfront and like, um, how to say, specific in the first conversation is really important so people can know like what to expect in the long term. That's really nice. Um, another question. What personal qualities do you believe contribute to your success in sales? You talked about personality. What kind of uh, traits you think you bring out into sales that make you a good salesperson? Good traits to have in sales is time management, mm -hmm. effective communication, but not just effective, positive communication. Even in the worst case scenarios, always find a way to show value or yeah. solution yeah to overcome that obstacle team morale and building up both for co-workers mm -hmm. and your customers you're mm -hmm. building up that's interesting what is your favorite uh, quality that you look for um in a colleague if they have it or not when you have to collaborate with someone does it happen that you uh like recognize this quality from me yourself like to them like you see it in them as well yeah um when i see a a quality that they're just crushing it at mm -hmm. i when it comes to task i like to delegate that task to them specifically because of how good their quality is mm -hmm. uh, knowing that they can take it to the next level versus yeah. what i can and of course, as they're working on it and doing it, provide recognition and celebrate as progress is being made. They focus on that. I focus on this. We're working as a team mm -hmm. to meet each other at the end. That, that's awesome. When we talk about your work, do you remember any challenging situation you had and how did you overcome it? Probably something that made you... I don't know, have a restless sleep or think about work uh, all the time? Do you have any stories to tell? That's a good question because I'm the kind of guy that really focuses more on the positive versus the negative. Mm -hmm. But the negatives are what strengthens me and builds character. And with customer service, um, man, 
I really don't. I actually, um, <laughs> at, at this time, that's a very good question. I, I just don't have an answer at this moment for that one. So let's, let me circle yeah. back to that. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Uh, I think it something similar to, happens to my brain as well. When people ask me like, okay, what was your, uh, like worst client or something like that and I'm like I don't know I don't retain this kind of information it doesn't stay in my brain it it just goes away and it is disposed and it, I just make space it, for new things and good things yeah filter yeah. it out yeah <laughs> yeah but what would you say it reminds you of I don't know failure or something that you didn't do good enough that also like gave you a lesson or something to, like a note for yourself in your career? And that's a good question. So early on in my sales career and versus where I am today, mm -hmm. it's more of, um, I've re realized it's more of the psychology of sales. So like what I mean by that is asking smart questions to reveal pain points, meaning mm -hmm. what what triggers them emotionally because people in sales and customer service, they buy for emotional regions, but they justify with logic, meaning yeah. they are in pain. They are going to buy. Mm -hmm. Are they connected with you emotionally? I understand that now. So if I could go back in time to my early sales career and if I understood the psychology better versus what I know today mm -hmm. I would absolutely do that because back then I was more just using me my personality and people liked my energy so they worked with me mm -hmm. today it's combining my personality with more sophisticated questions so that mm -hmm. I understand what they are looking for, mm -hmm. help guiding them to the value of what I am selling mm -hmm. uh, so that they can move forward. Okay. So you would say that something you learned is the psychology and the importance of psychology behind sales during these early days. I yes, if I could go back, I wish I was trained better on that. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I I knew mm -hmm. um what I knew today back then because my past failures as to why the customer didn't buy from me. And when I reflect back to that, mm -hmm. it's because I wasn't asking good questions. Mm -hmm. I was just going through the motions, presenting. Yep, this is the apartment. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Move forward today. I understand like what size apartment are you looking for? Is there any special features or requirements that you are looking for mm -hmm. in an apartment home or in a community? Yeah. And as they're answering those questions, I'm just redirecting them to the value mm -hmm. of what my community does have for what they are looking for. Great. And if you meet someone who is just starting in sales, what advice would you give them or your younger self? Maybe if you have to speak to yourself back then, what would you say? Like maybe three things, three advices. Three advices in that. Mm -hmm. uh, one is explore what specific area in sales you are looking for, such as, are you looking more of the marketing side of sales? Are you looking more of the customer service sides in sales? Mm -hmm. Or are you looking for more of the leadership side in sales? Mm -hmm. Figure out what area of sales specifically you want to thrive in and apply mm -hmm. your focus and energy and time to that area in particular to grow and expand in that field. Mm -hmm. Second, Time management skills is crucial. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in the business. There's a lot being thrown at a sales professional. Mm -hmm. It's a very fast paced, busy business. Business. Mm -hmm. What you put in is what you get out of it. So yeah. time management and using it effectively is crucial. Mm -hmm. And positive communication. People want to work. Customers want to work with somebody that is has good influence mm -hmm. genuine 
authentic, not someone that is actually showing their best interest to earn a paycheck, not just collecting a paycheck, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yes, it does. It does. That makes all the difference between uh, professionals who care and professionals who are just doing their job. Yes. <laughs> um, another question that comes to mind, if I decide to switch to sales this right this moment, uh, what would you say I should do first? Like you mentioned uh, exploring different types of sales and um, fields of sales. How would I know fast and easy which type which of sales is for me? No, great question. And it's really about just giving the experience. Mm -hmm. um, give it an honest experience. Like go into the business and look for mentors. Mm -hmm. Enter a business. And as you're doing your job, express that I would like to see what it's like in your shoes. Talk to the property manager and ask, can you delegate some of your responsibility for me to see if I like it? Mm. Talk to the marketing specialist. Mm -hmm. Can you delegate some of your marketing responsibility to me to see if I want to grow in marketing? Mm -hmm. Talk to the recruiter. Can you delegate some of your recruiting responsibility, responsibility to me to see mm -hmm. if that's an area that I would like to grow in? When you work in a position at any job, I like to ask for more responsibility from each specific field to get a taste so that I know what I want to grow towards, what I want to work towards. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Basically, start in different types of uh, sales by doing and by practicing. That's your best advice. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Experience no goes a long way and it builds character. Yes. Yeah. Okay, no books, no podcasts, no shows, just straight get into the work. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to read. Books are valuable because they are the veterans. They're people that have done it and it's mm -hmm. good to learn from role models that um, have gone through that experience. So like, as I'm, like, as an example, when I'm mm -hmm. learning uh, to grow in a role, of course, I'm asking for that responsibility, but also it's good to listen to shows and read books in that field as well. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm reading 12 Rules of um, Twelve Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson, mm -hmm. um, just to get connected more psychology. And fun fact, Jordan Peterson Turns out he's the voice act. He's the original voice character of Kermit the Frog. No, really? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So <laughs> it's interesting. I didn't know that. But uh, if, if you recommend that book, would you say that it's a good read? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's very deep. Um, mm -hmm. Understanding uh, why people do certain things. Um, just getting in tone with yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you personally build and maintain relationships with clients? Build and maintain. Yeah. And during the early phases, building rapport, discovering what they're looking for, and building that genuine connection that you truly care uh, for what they are looking for, their, their why in a way. Yeah. The, it's a unique business. The five biggest life experiences is typically job um, change, mm -hmm. relocating, divorce. Mm -hmm. And in the business I'm in, I put up with those a lot. People come to me because unfortunately, they lost their, they have a change of relocating due to job. Yeah. Divorces are unfortunately at a higher rate. I believe last I read was 51%. I do experience Mm -hmm. People coming to me in that circumstance, they need to get away like mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, and also exciting, they are looking to get their first apartment, which is my favorite part, finding right. that perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> this um, so it's, it's not always negative, there is positive. But yeah. even with negatives, it's my part to be the positive and find that home to relieve them from pain. Mm -hmm. I got it in the time frame you're looking for. 
Mm-hmm. It's got specifically what you brought to my attention. Yeah. It's a no brainer. Let's move forward. Yes. People um, connect uh, home with security. Would you say security is top priority for your customers? It's a unique question. Um, unique as in a good question because every property mm-hmm. is different um, between location and such as their student housing, yeah. their senior living, their subsidized living. There, There's a lot of different fields with apartments. Mm-hmm. So with students, it's more so cost effectiveness. Yep. Um, they're trying not to blow their parents' bank account mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, senior living, it's I've learned it's more about location. They are looking for somewhere that's a little more quieter. Yeah, easy commutes. <laughs> yes, yes. And safety, I get those... Um, questions a lot like how's the area Mm -hmm. kind of thing and I always delegate them to ask the local police department of how's the area Mm -hmm. and go a step further how is it at this complex versus other complexes in that area Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just one of those unique laws in the business I'm in I'm not allowed to reveal crime or anything that activity but what i can do is redirect them over mm-hmm. to the local f- authorities to yes. answer that question really truthfully nice. yes, yes yes that's really nice that's really nice okay what uh, kind of strategies do you use to stay motivated in your business i saw on your story that you have uh, different titles for uh, sales uh, consultant performances different titles how do you keep yourself motivated with every one of those uh, words that you're referencing, thank you. I um, I set a goal. I set a target. Mm-hmm. And for that goal, I break that goal into realistic SMART goals from the year to the month to the week to the day. Mm-hmm. And as I'm making progress, what I do to stay motivated is I celebrate every small win. Ooh. until I hit the man the goal that the target that I am working for so celebrating small wins throughout the process is how I keep up momentum do you journal also while you're doing th- this I report <laughs> I I like to report and I I show that I report to higher management like uh-huh. you remember what I said there well this is what I've done in this week this nice. is what I've done in weeks i we have six months every six months we touch base and i'm mm-hmm. like yep this is my annual goal and mm-hmm. this is how far i've come so i i do a journal in a way by reporting because the difference between journaling and reporting is when i report in a way i feel like i'm holding myself accountable because yes. i'm telling you mm-hmm. i'm doing it mm-hmm. journaling it's more about yourself you're telling yourself that which is good Mm -hmm. but I like to hold myself my feet to the fire Mm -hmm. by telling my boss I will follow through with this that's amazing that's a great tactic um if we ask three of your closest friends what is Gary like uh how would you (laughs) this how do you think they will describe you I think they would describe me as ambitious goal-oriented and kind of a character (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that, you... that's the best uh, off the top of my head that's what I come up with yeah okay uh what can you elaborate on the last one kind of a character what does it mean <laughs> what I mean by that is um my personality I don't really swear I mean like as an example I say what the fluff okay yeah <laughs> just just you know I I don't really curse mm-hmm. um I I try to, my vocabulary when it comes to like unique, like, uh, like frustrating moments. Yeah. I I tell the, I can tell the person, like, as an example, like in the midst of um, a fast paced environment, I can, I tell my coworker, okay, go paw off, you know, (laughs) just, just, just fun, light, humorous. Okay. uh, Like comments. I, I, so I get that sometimes. (laughs) 
Okay, I see. Do you have any dad jokes included in that vocabulary or is strictly specific to uh, high pressure high pressure situations where you just don't want to be rude and <laughs> insert humor? Yes, to help lighten the mood. Uh, yeah, so what do you call a pile of cats? Meow town? <laughs> yes, no, you're good. Now here's another one. What yeah. do you call what do you call a cat with spikes i don't know a cactus <laughs> okay okay <yeah. laughs> what what um what did the cat say when it blew all of its money meow it <laughs> I, I like that i was gonna say i'm paw i'm paw i'm paw like what does or... it mean <laughs> what does it mean in paw like, like i'm poor, i'm poor but they have a pause you know <laughs> oh yeah just just goofy stuff like that okay or, okay or and, one more one more what, yeah. what did the what did the ufo say to the cat i don't know <laughs> take me to your litter uh <laughs> <laughs> litter litter e okay yeah <laughs> got it <laughs> You travel a lot for work. Can you tell uh, me a bit about uh, how you manage and what is your biggest struggle when it comes to work and traveling on top of that? No, very good question. Um, calendar, um, set a calendar. And before entering an assignment, I get notified a few weeks in advance as to where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And I use my calendar religiously. So I prioritize by marking my assignment in there. I send an email asking, is there anything specific that you need out of me for this assignment? And when when I get that response, I strategize as to when I enter, because I'm only there for two or three weeks, ideally, Yeah. how to make the most use of my time for this specific community. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it includes coaching. Yeah. Like hires. Sometimes they just need a higher closing ratio with their tours sometimes it is it actually is marketing because the location mm -hmm. of the community is just in a difficult spot yeah um so i prioritize by marking it developing a strategy stay, just staying ahead honestly just staying ahead is how i make everything smooth mm -hmm. i i work harder planning for the future versus working in the moment oh it, okay it's the best way i can explain it <laughs> yes so you focus solely on preparation and doing the work before the work correct yes yeah okay okay so time management it's really really important skill that a sales consultant has to um grasp but where do you stay when you go on your assignment do you get like a part of the community apartment or do you uh, have to book a hotel every time how does that work for someone who is working in the real estate but also you know has to stay here and there somewhere combination of both ideally mm -hmm. um ideally i do use the model mm -hmm. of the uh, community mm -hmm. some communities don't have models and in what that scenario model? what is a model, oh, a model Model is like um, when you go to an apartment community, they might have one specific apartment home that's empty that uh -huh. they decorated where they can just show you mm. this is our model apartment, like a one bedroom. And these are the features that you can expect moving into your apartment down the road. Mm. So I, I usually take the model, ideally, if they have one. If they don't have one, then yes, I do look for hotels and I book uh, for that. But most of the time in my position, it is the model apartment. Okay. Okay. Uh, now as a designer, I, was, I honestly want to know uh, who designs that model apartment. Do you hire an interior designer? Who does that job? Because for me, that would be the, the fun part of the whole experience. No, for sure. Now, um, very good question because the company I work for, we with property management and management companies, mm -hmm. this goes a little deeper into answering that question. Yeah. Management companies in the apartment business, they can be short-term, mid-term, 
and there's long term. The style of community that I work with, mm -hmm. it's more can classified as REIT investments, meaning when we buy a community, mm -hmm. we're holding on to it. We're not looking to sell it. We're mm -hmm. looking to for the long run for yeah. our investor for our investors to get these monthly dividends or quarterly dividends i should say now why i wanted to point that out is is because we typically buy and hold we're buying apartments from previous management companies and we're kind of holding on to them mm -hmm. so when it comes to the design aspects of the model typically it's being carried over from prior management to us and we're just kind of holding on to it now mm -hmm. when it comes to redesigning it we're budget we have a budget and it's not like within the same year of purchase it's more of we want to feel see how is that community doing and is this a community that we want to put more money into and for those ones mm -hmm. yes we delegate that to our our in-house marketing team and our in-house marketing team is looking for like Ikea or here in the United States court furniture where they can yeah. buy packages to place inside that model. Mm, I see. I see. So when they're looking for um, interior design, they're looking at the whole room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, okay. they look. The whole apartment, yeah. They're, I mean, even like recoding paint, getting the furniture, everything. I see, I see. So, so you work on a modular basis. It's not like you hire someone and then they will come in and look at the uh, environment and like, I recommend you use this and you put there here. It's like, okay. Yeah, we we try to do it all in house. We, mm. we try to get outside contractors and we try to do it uh with our marketing team buying what they what they need for the model and it's a special project so office yeah. and maintenance team within the community mm -hmm. bill brings it all together yeah what what happens if someone is checking the model with you for example and they say like Oh, this would be nice, but I wish I could fit this specific appliance here. Do you scale that suggestion or idea upwards so they can take note of that and make it more desirable or something similar? And very good question. And because during the phone call, like mm -hmm. as I'm explaining the features of the apartment, I point out, you know, this apartment is the bedroom is perfect size for a queen size bed. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do that while I'm building the report is to mitigate those situations. So when it comes to furniture size, I do go the extra mile naturally on the phone to specify mm -hmm. what it can and can't fit. Yeah. Now, I do get those um, questions such as, does your community have garage area? Yeah. If the community does, I guide them to it. But if not, how I spin that around is, you know, on site, we don't have that. But I will say we do have local storage units around not even five minutes away. Mm -hmm. I have um, storage units of America mm -hmm. next door. Mm -hmm. I redirect them over there, showing them how convenient it is to mm -hmm. the location of the community. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, so basically, you always find a solution to their problem. No, that is a great question. There are features that I can overcome, like storage units. Mm -hmm. There are other features where, let's say they have three pets, but my policy is you can't have more than two pets. I would then at that point redirect them to a different community that does allow three pets. Okay. Um, I always find a way to spin it mm -hmm. for the convenience. And if it doesn't fit their need, I respect that. I just redirect them to competitions that I'm aware of that offer what yeah. they are looking for. Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. Can you share some useful habits or skills you have outside of work, but that help you in your career? The willingness to learn. 
Mm. furthering education. And that's not only um, helping me grow professionally, but also personally. Mm -hmm. And by furthering education, by such as classes, books, podcasts, or YouTube, I'm also learning what the latest trends are in the business mm -hmm. as to where I'm working or what I aspire to get into. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you grow. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what is your favorite part about working in sales? My favorite part about working in sales, I love that question. I love helping the customer find what they are looking for in achieving what they want out of me. Mm. I also love how sales at the end of the day, it is a numbers game as well, mm -hmm. meaning setting a goal and working towards that goal. Like, do you want to, in the apartment business, do you want to get seven leases this week? Or are we looking to achieve 20 renewals for the month? Mm -hmm. Setting a target get, allows us to be focused on something to work towards. And it's just awesome enjoying the progress and celebrate every lease that's signed um, or renewal as we're working towards that goal. Oh, yeah. Now is the time for the rapid questions. Uh, if you can travel anywhere and at any time, area or period, uh, where and when would you go? I would love to check out Scotland because the architecture is so beautiful over there. Mm -hmm. But what time? In, in the future, in the present or in the past? Honestly, any time. I think ideally in the past, mm -hmm. when, uh, but it's just interesting like how the architecture of Scotland, it carries over to modern day and it feels like you are in the past. Right. It, it looks very, uh, <laughs> how to say, uh, regional, very gothic, very grand and really, really uh, interesting how they build this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a specific uh, location in mind or just browse around Scotland in general? More browse. Mm -hmm. I want to see the castles, the buildings, and just the landscape scenery. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful in my eyes. I would love to um, visit it. Also, my great grandpa is from Wales. So mm -hmm. I, I got a little Scottish in me and I would love to just reconnect to mm -hmm. those roots. What is your favorite meal to uh, cook? Because I know you like to cook. <laughs> Anything pasta, honestly. Anything it's pasta. Anything uh, like, I mean, the Italians did a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> they did. It's yeah. it's just so delicious. Uh, spaghetti, pizza, lasagna. It's just bon appetit. You know. <laughs> okay. 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 Can you uh, name something that is on your bucket list except Scotland? Because we already discussed that. On my bucket list, I obviously I want to travel outside of the country, and I am on track to doing that soon uh, mm -hmm. for the first time by myself. I would also like to um, design my own training program to help impact others in their sales mm -hmm. career. Okay. More like a deeper question, what would you like to be remembered for? Impacting others positively and growing into the best versions of themselves, ideally uh, with their corporate career in sales because, mm -hmm. because I have been able to grow myself um, without having a college degree. I am getting educated and I'm using knowledge to help motivate me in the direction I want to work towards. But yeah, I was able to achieve positions without a college degree. I Because I have experienced it firsthand, I want to and be a role model to pass that off to other people as well in their professional life. That's great. And one question from the listeners and from my audience on Instagram, how to effectively sell add-ons for your services? Is it better to charge for add-ons when making a sale or offer them for free as a hook for sales? No, great question. Obviously, Combination of both. I like to acknowledge the price early on mm -hmm. because by acknowledging, just acknowledging, I, it's telling me, are they the kind of client I want to work with and moving forward yeah. with it? Or is this price just so high that 
they're going to be like saying that's ridiculous. So mm -hmm. once I filter that out, yep. then transition into giving them a taste of mm -hmm. what I have to offer so that they can get a feel mm -hmm. for the product. And if they like it, yep. well, let's move forward. Pro price is not an issue. We, we've overcome that. Yep. You've agreed that you liked it. They said yes. Mm -hmm. Now we can just move forward into becoming. Yeah. So would you would say that it's better to focus on the first yes to get the second and then the third yes and then offer the add-ons? Yes. Yeah. Have them say yes more than one time because in their mind, they're just seeing, they're seeing themselves mm -hmm. in that. So the more the yeses that you get out of them, the yep. more likely they are to move forward with you to the end. How would you say you or anybody in, in particular can upsell successfully when it comes to sales? What should we focus on if we want to uh, up, up, upsell something? To upsell, mm -hmm. at first identify what they're looking for. And when you know that they are going to move forward with what they need out of out of you or the product, mm -hmm. I then make a recommendation to taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. They are for sure going to buy from me. They are moving forward. Great. They, at this point, that's step one, because they trust me. They trust the product. They yeah. are interested in moving forward. I know they will buy. Mm -hmm. Knowing that that has, that the first phase has been met, Mm -hmm. I then move over to recommending another um, another feature where maybe they will move forward. And if not, at least I know I made that recommendation. Mm -hmm. I built that relationship with, with yeah. them. Yeah. They will keep it in mind for the future um, down the road if they don't buy from me today. Yeah. How, how keen are you on follow-ups or maybe I should phrase it like, do you rely on follow-ups or do you leave the client decide and come back to you if they're really in need? That's a great question. And it's a combination of both. I do, studies show that six follow-ups, they should buy mm. within six or give you an answer like, no, I'm not interested. And okay. even no, it's not always no. Mm -hmm. It can be yes down the road. They, they might circle back and needing it. Mm -hmm. And they will keep you in mind. Mm -hmm. I agree with follow up in that context because you want them to remember you, even if they don't buy from you today, mm -hmm. follow up so they recognize you that you're in that field. And when they are revisiting that service, yeah. they will come to you. Now, my style is more influential. Mm -hmm. where I rel I strive for that first impression, meaning when the phone rings, am I in check? Yeah. Because the customer, when they talk to you on the phone, they know if you're having a good day or a bad day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How, so smile on that phone, make mm -hmm. the most of that first impression, mm -hmm. show that you are interested in them. Mm -hmm. A pattern interrupt that I use, just to elaborate on that, is yeah. in sales... You're wearing a lot of different hats. You could be focused on the accounting portion of it. You could be focused on a special project, meaning resonant events in my field. Mm -hmm. I could be so focused because it is time sensitive that I need to get this done. Yeah. When a customer walks in unexpectedly, a good pattern interrupt that works for me is as soon as that door opens up, I just stand up and I mm -hmm. put my hands together. Mm hmm now I'm I'm focused on them and I greet them saying, welcome to our community. Mm -hmm. My name is Gary. How can I be of service to you today? Mm -hmm. I, I just show that I have their undivided attention. And when they see that, because let's be realistic, this day and age, mm -hmm. not a lot of businesses do that, at least here in America. Um, I'm taking a sales training program and I've learned this blew my mind, but approximately 73% of America businesses yeah. don't actually train their team properly in sales. Mm -hmm. So I know 
because I go that extra mile to show that I have their undivided attention, they're interested in me working with me. Yeah. If yeah. they don't like the product, I know they will be interested in working with me. Yeah. Making them uh, feel acknowledged is, is the first step. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Acknowledge. Yes. Yeah. And uh, one of uh, the last questions I have in mind is today we see like so many uh, manipulative tactics, tactics in terms of uh, sales and how to get someone to buy. Uh, there's a term now going around lead magnets and whatnot. What is your best advice on one, what not to do when you go in into sales? One or more advices, what not to do? <laughs> Very good question. In the sales business, the mm -hmm. best uh, the best advice I can give in that would be uh, don't go in blind. Mm -hmm. Have some kind of clue as to what you are going into. To be an effective closer, yeah. like when you're targeting a specific uh, client, you want to go in having a clue as to what their struggles are mm -hmm. in that business or what has proven to work for them and redirect those points to the value that you have to offer. Be knowledgeable mm -hmm. about approaching that person and how your service or product will benefit them in those areas. Basically, sell them what they need. <laughs> yes, what they need. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gary, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge uh, when it comes to uh, sales. And now is the time for you to leave your business card and say where people can find you and where they can connect with you. Yeah, thank you, Nikki, for having me on your podcast. This is my very first one. Mm -hmm. And if anybody is looking to strengthen their performance, influence, mindset, or strategy, need some sales coaching, mm -hmm. please uh, look up me up on my website, garywilliams-sales.com. Again, that's garywilliams-sales.com. The website is amazing because yours truly, Nikki, <laughs> made it. Thank you, Nikki. I love it. And I'm happy that I'm able to promote your works thank you i will put also your uh, professional instagram handle if you don't mind here under your uh, uh, video and uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and see you until the next time <laughs> see ya thank you nikki bye bye